Hello everyone, this is Michael Merdad and it's time for our Friday Night Spiritual Insights with Michael Merdad. So today we're going to talk about the difference between self-worth and self-esteem. Okay, it's um, kind of fun when I use these contrasting kinds of uh, uh, themes. You know, some people think such things are the same. There are so many topics in psychology, spirituality, self-help that are misrepresented or misunderstood. And I, I love being one that can help just, you know, do my best anyway, my part to kind of bring it together and say, you know, here's the difference or here's the truth about these things. And I appreciate you guys being open to um, learning and listening, I guess, you know? So thank you. Um, so people do assume these things are the same, but self-worth is really something that comes from our connection to spirit. Self-worth. The word worth, think of as being similar to value. And our true value comes from our true identity. So self-worth comes from spirit, our, our connection to God. Self-esteem, the word esteem is like saying my reputation. Esteem, a person of high esteem. Reputation. Um, you can have that because of money, because of... Um, family of origin, you know, or whatever, royalty or whatever. Um, so people, you know, think that that's the same. It's not the same. One comes from God, one comes from self. One is spiritual, one is ego-based. So they're not the same. So that kind of cuts to the chase already. And I would say, um, you know, when you're thinking about self, self-worth, if you don't have any kind of a prayer meditation practice how could you be filling up creating worth now let's use worth to be similar for a moment and only in metaphor your your um, your value your dollar worth okay your your financial worth i think that you can only get more funds in a bank account if you deposit those funds and then it builds and you have more financial worth on the third dimensional level if you don't make deposits in terms of spirituality like prayer and meditation how could your worth be increasing? So if you don't think, if you think you have self-worth, but you don't have a spiritual practice, you can't have any worth because worth comes from God. You can say, oh no, my worth comes from my success. No, your self-esteem came from your successes. Don't mix the two. Don't confuse the two because then you're going to be guilty for confusing other people of such a thing. So just be real, be honest, be clear. Bottom line, if you don't have a spiritual practice, you know, there's, uh, there's little or no chance that you have true self-worth, which means you're going to feel a void inside, a hole in the soul. And that will not be filled until you'll compensate somewhere. You know, you'll, drugs, relations, or whatever it happens to be. True self-worth is my value, which is determined by God. And I happen to have a relationship with God, so I know that. And guess what? It's increasing every day. How do I know that? because I make a deposit. When I make a deposit in the bank, I know for sure, you know, that if I had $10 yesterday and I put in five today, I have $15. That's simple math. And it's the same with our relationship with God. If I pray and meditate, I just happen to know with pretty fair certainty that today I have more connectedness than yesterday. Um, so that's something to consider. <clears throat> Self-worth, um, to me, when there there are perks to this, like I'm plugging in and I'm, I, Michael says I should be able to know that I'm getting more every day. Great. Okay, cool. How do I know? <clears throat> How do I know when it kicks in? How do I know when it's real? How do I know for sure? Do I have evidence that I, that I have true self-worth? And I would say the more we get plugged in, the more you'll feel like symptoms of it, signs of it. Those would include what? Well, to me, um, creative inspirations, um, happiness, like Jesus will tell you in A Course in Miracles. Christ teaches as a consciousness. Christ um, consciousness teaches. Um, you'll, you'll be able to know from your feelings. You know, you'll be able to know, you know, from you feel. Now, it doesn't mean you, you have a bad day that you're suddenly not connected. It's just to say, do you generally feel good energy? Do you feel inspired? 
Do you feel happy? Do you like to help other people? Helping other people usually, not always, but <clears throat> usually comes from a sense of inspiration. So I think it's kind of cool, you know. You feel that, that's a good sign. You know, that seems to verify that maybe I feel kind of plugged in today. Um, sometimes feeling an, uh, a level of energy in your body that most people could not have. I mean, they get, you know, they can't do as much work or uh, work as hard. I'm not saying because some people are obsessive and workaholics. That's not the same. But sometimes we could say that having a little more zeal, having a little more, you know, um, in Chinese medicine, you might call it jing, um, power, strength, uh, zip, pizzazz, inspiration, happiness, excitement, not stimulation, excitement, but kind of like inspired excitement. These are all signs that you're doing pretty well. And I think you could say you have a um, fair, fair quantity deposited of self-worth. I mean, to me, that's a good way to just check in and see if it's for real. Um, remember that self-worth is, is not the same as w more shallow terms, esteem or stimulus or working so hard you burn yourself out. It's not quite that. It's, it's um, starting from the core inside. You just feel it. And if any of you can check in and just go, okay, let me see where I'm at. Do I accept that I'm made in God's image? That probably helps fill me up with more self, you know, self-worth. So, yeah, I feel kind of connected. And I do believe that I'm made in God's image. That's a good sign. Self-worth is building. Do I believe I can connect? Yes. Do I believe that I can let go of guilt and shames in my past? Yes. It's making room for more true self-worth. The more I feel connected, the more, you know, I, I feel like renewed energy. The more I feel connected, I mean, this is like a whole ecosystem. Bliss, wonderment, power, just joy, um, imagination, peace, the desire to want to help or even share my peace with other people. I get some money and I want to share it. That's all self-worth. See, self-esteem is how I look. So self-worth, I am. Self-esteem, I look. I appear, okay? Tune into that being, you know, a very clear sign of, of a, a difference between the two. Um, some people think it's kind of egotistical to think the things I just shared, like uh, I'm connected to God, I'm made in God's image, I am a holy child of God. Self-worth is like saying, God is the king of the universe, king and queen of the universe, and I'm a prince princess in this universe. I am in, able to inherit all that God is. Some people would say, oh, that's, that's evil to say that. If you're a fundamental Christian, you might say that's evil to make such claims. Other people would say it's egotistical in the world of psychology. It's, it's ego-based or self-worth, they might call it ego-based. But no, it's actually egotistical for me to say I am not made in God's image and I am unworthy of God's inheritance. Okay, that's it. So that's, that's ego. So... Self-esteem is like saying, let's bury all of our negative feelings. Self-worth and self-esteem both want to see that low self-worth is gone. They want to see that negative things, guilt, shames, regrets, they're not there, but in, for different reasons. Spirit wants us to say they're not there because it doesn't want us guilting ourselves, shaming ourselves, and judging ourselves. The ego, self-esteem, doesn't want it there because it's an inconvenience on my false level of self-esteem. You know, so self-esteem is like, it's how I look. And if something makes me look less than perfect, I don't like it. It's a threat. See, self-worth can't actually be threatened. So guys, when you have true self-worth, you'll know. One other reason you'll know is because people can't take it from you with a word. I mean, we all feel a little hurt when people say things a little bit, some of us more than others, but you know, um, Jesus, Jesus had people saying all kinds of things to him and it, he didn't like go, Oh man, I wanted to be a, be a spiritual teacher. And now I can't because you guys don't like me. It's so in, you know, impenetrable, the armor of the Lord. I mean, it's like, you just hold this. This is, this is the truth of who I am. Now here's where it gets tricky. If I say I'm going to know who I am and I have high self-worth, but my behaviors are constantly, consistently hurtful and hypocritical, 
then the self-worth is not real self-worth. You could say, oh, you know, Michael said I can hold on to an identity of who I really am and I deserve it. Not if your behaviors completely contradict it. You know, because you would see an improvement. My self-worth is shared with others. Watch this carefully. If I have self-worth versus self-esteem. See, self-esteem is mine. Mine, mine, mine. Self-worth is mine slash ours. I cannot have any self-worth that I'm not willing to share with you. My self-worth says, I feel good today. I would love to help you feel good. Self-esteem is, I'm great. Period. Nothing more. Not how are you. Just that's all that matters. It's very self-centered. Um, so, I, you know, it's very narcissistic and self-centered and so on. So we got to break that. You know, self-esteem is like, uh, not only do, uh, do I want my esteem noticed and I want to be seen as great, it should be called self-esteem, you know, to be seen a certain way, but self-esteem. But uh, there's more to it. Not only do I need to hang on to this little identity I've created uh, for myself instead of the one God gave me, um, I need people to sort of support it, to inflate it, to stroke my ego. And naturally, if those people are not stroking my ego, my esteem starts to get threatened. So I need to lash out at them and, and be angry and hate them. And, you know, so that's where you see sometimes, um, you know, um, a person's esteem sort of gets, their reputation gets attacked. Nobody likes that, mind you, but it gets attacked and we take it so seriously sometimes now, on even small levels. I, I told a story once where, um, you know, one of my daughters um, went in and just got something of mine that was personal and, and, and took it out and, you know, was telling, hey, look, I got daddy's this, whatever it was. And I remember my first response, I was like a little shocked because she knew that privacy is to be honored for each other, right? But, you know, my first response was kind of shock. My second response was, how can I ever trust you again when you did something like this? My third response was, oops, because it was not my self-worth that was being breached, broached, connected, contacted, you know, messed with. It was only self-esteem. And I saw it, you know, immediately. It took seconds, but it's still. And I felt bad even for the seconds that I was like angry, hurt, or whatever you want to call it, betrayed. Oh, you know, well, poor me. You know, this is probably around, <clears throat> probably around 1990, I think. And, um, and then I said, sorry, you know, uh, I'm sorry, you know. I was just, I was just mad because to me, that was private. See, but underneath it, what we need to learn to do is think it wasn't just private. I was attached to that privacy. And we react because our attachment is not the privacy like we think. It's the attachment to the privacy. And so that was a quick, immediate lesson. That's how we have to do things, guys. See it and turn it around. You're not bad. You're not, you know, not connected with God when you make a mistake. But if you refuse to own the mistake and clear it, then you're probably leaning towards more ego-based self-esteem. I refuse to forgive you for this thing you've done. Um, there's really nothing, nothing in the universe that is completely unforgivable. I know that we, we believe there are some things, and I know it's hard to even hear this, um, you know. No, there's, there's definitely some things that are unforgivable. If there's anything unforgivable, then there's something in me, because we're all connected, that's unforgivable. And if I say something's unforgivable, in my opinion, of something somebody did to me, then I too am condemned along with those I condemn. So there's nothing, and pe people will eventually realize that, um, you know, but there's really nothing that has any power over my self-worth. Over my self-esteem, everything has power over self-esteem because it's not real and it's shallow. It can easily be broken or spit on or stepped on or shamed scratched up because it's a facade. Self-worth through and through, forward, backward, left, right, up, down, in, out, completely. It's an, it's an aura of light. It's who I really am. And thank God that can never be, you know, taken away or, or um, threatened in any way. So <clears throat> let's just real quick, a, a couple things I'll share with you. Ideas of things that can harm 
our self-worth. Things Now, nothing can truly harm, truly harm our self-worth, but things that make us lose sight of it. Doesn't mean it's not there, but we lose sight, connection, plug in to self-worth, the things that really kind of take a toll. Um, all of us could make our own list and it would overlap. So you, you would be right to have named a couple things that I won't name. I'm only going to want to name, a, you know, maybe a half dozen or seven or so, something like that. Um, so one of them is, believe it or not, certain memories, shames, wounds from past lives can keep me out of touch with my true self-worth. And I could be living some of that knowingly and unknowingly. I could be living the effect of, you know, um, those events. You know, they just kind of, you know, they kind of cut us deeply. Um, what I've done to others, but also what others have done to me, past lives. Obviously, childhood tra childhood traumas, it's the same thing. Things I did or things other, you know, people did to me. Um, you know that those moments where we've done something and our parents just look Besides the raging they've done at times, some for some of us, there's those times when the parents looked at us like, "Oh my God, I have completely lost hope in you, faith. You've you've completely let me down." It's like even a dog is like, you know, sorry. Um, so it's it's it it can really hit us. It can really shame us, and it's not their fault. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. But us believing it is our own responsibility. They could have gotten all tripped out on us and I, what? Can't believe a child of mine did that. <clears throat> but um, but it's up to us to let that roll off our back and, and move into adulthood without, without taking that on as our identity, but we often don't succeed at doing that. Many of us, um, I'd say most people. Um, which overlaps to a third item, I'll say, like um, regrets, mistakes and regrets. Um, they lead us into negative experiences. Like there's regrets and, and mistakes already wear on my self-worth potentially or my connection to self-worth. But, um, but when my mistakes and errors and, you know, and, and just things I've done, regrets, have led me into like horrible experiences it really weighs. I can make a mistake, nobody knows about it, nobody sees it. That's one level of ugh, shame or something. But there's times when, guys, when we've made mistakes and it really kept going. The times where um, I, I've known people, friends, who have um, said yes when they didn't feel they should have, said yes to going to a party and they ended up raped and it changed them forever. It doesn't need to, um, but it does. I mean, it does often. and. It wears on us because my first time I wanted to be look a certain way and be a certain way, beauty and love, and now they took that away seemingly. So we carry some of those things very harshly, you know, um, into our soul, and it's really a drag. But it's not God's will that we beat ourselves up. God's saying, "Do you know what? What you know what you lost that day? Well, my 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 value might no, I lost my virginity. No, you lost your esteem, which isn't you anyway. It's just a kind of a shallow level of reputation. Whether it's your reputation with yourself or with others, your self-worth was not touched, damaged in any way. Really? Really. Wow, thank you, God. You know, if you asked God, that's what God would tell you. Thank you. So I really have value? Yes, you still have value and you always will. That's what self-worth looks like. It's immune to all these, you know, uh, crazy, hurtful, harmful things that we do to ourselves and others. Um, Sometimes um, a loss can take a toll on us, like a loss of a loved one or a series of losses. It can really, I mean, I've known people that have felt like I was raised an orphan. It affected me. I was raised without one parent. It affected me. Kids teased me for only having one parent or things like that. So losses of loved ones being the, 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 the kid whose parents died, you know. I mean, it's just so rude how kids can even be. Somebody's dad or mom dies. They go back to school and people are like, oh, your dad died. It's like, what are you thinking to tease a kid for such a thing? But we do. And so even losses can, you know, can take a toll. Um, having one or more, you know, significantly hurtful people in our lives, just constantly badgering us, that can take a toll. And remember what I said, it can't really affect self-worth, but it, it can affect our connection to self-worth. The self-worth is still there. Our true self 
is still there. That's why our worth is still there because the true self is there and it's worth everything. It's the most valuable thing in the universe. Picture that. Really get that. Your worth, your self, capital S, your real self, is the absolute most precious, valuable thing on the planet, in the universe, I'll even say. And some of you are going to be like, no way, I'm telling you. There is nothing of greater value than our true self in this entire universe. One reason I can prove that is because it's our true self that created the entire universe. So we are pretty big figures in this story here, okay? So there's that. Um, negative self-talk, you know, just in our heads, man. Oh, you know, and you don't look good anymore and you don't this anymore. It's only talking to the self-esteem. Try to see the difference. When you hear yourself bad talking, oh, you know, oh, my hips, you know, um, I shouldn't eat this Cinnabon. It's going to go right to my hips. You know, um, I'm actually only talking to my self-esteem there and it's not healthy talk. So it's not, I'm not in conversation with my self-worth right then. I shifted to talk about my self-esteem. In other words, I'm talking from my ego to my lower self. And that means automatically, by default, I've shifted out of higher self, and therefore I'm not addressing self-worth. I'm only addressing self-esteem. So, just see the difference. One more topic that affects us. Number seven, I think we're on. This is going to be an out of the blue one because the other applies to almost everybody. This one's going to apply to only some people, but some of you asked recently for me to address this, and rather than a full... 45 minutes on this topic. I'm going to only include it, um, you know, as one item, okay? And that is abortion. Um, you know, abortion is something that has affected a lot of people's connection to their self-worth. Um, some people have had abortions and said, thank God, because something happened and it shouldn't have been. I wasn't going to want to have a kid with this person. And they learned their lesson and then they, you know, and they should be kind of grateful, but they still sometimes feel bad. Other times, you know, no support from a partner, no support from us. Other, you know, it's just all kinds of reasons. But um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that have just seem to maintain a lot of um, hurt, you know, low self-esteem and not realizing that it can go back to things like that. Um, I've known people, um, you know, who when you track things with them, when you look inside why they have a, a illness, why they have terrible menstrual pains, why they're having uniquely harsh um, menopause, um, why they have um, endometriosis, or you know, even, um, even in their life they might have had several miscarriages, and you track all that back, a lot of times um, it tracks back to things like an abortion. Uh, and I'm not trying to perpetuate you did something wrong. I'm saying that people think they've done something wrong. They hold it against themselves and it affects their, you know, sense of um, self-esteem. Again, it can't really affect your worth, but it'll disconnect you from your worth. Um, so I'll say a few things about this and um, semi-hesitant because the controversy around the topic. I'm going to tell you the spiritual perspective of it. Like it or don't like it. Believe it or don't believe it. Or whatever. If you if it's not for you, um, sign off and don't listen. You know, if you want to stay afraid and guilty or ashamed or want to shame others for it, uh, you better sign off because that's not where we're going to be able to go because it's not the truth of God. So for starters, you have an abortion. Um, if you are careless, you're sleeping around, and you know because you do so, you get pregnant every year and you abort every year just to like like it's just like taking an aspirin for a headache. I think that you're being very self-serving. I think that you're being um, hurtful to yourself. And I think that you will see re results from that, karmic results from that, consequences. And I don't support that sort of behavior. However, in those cases where um, something happens or an accident or pregnancy that, you know, isn't going to be a good thing to follow through with, um, uh, rapes, um, you know, or you're really young and it could just ruin your family. Um, I know we don't all agree on all the details. All I'm saying is generally I do believe that most of the time girls are not meaning to cause harm or be bad about it, you know, be selfish about it. So I really feel for them. I'm not telling you to do it or not to do it. I'm telling you I just simply feel bad for the, anybody for any reason that ends up doing it. 
Um, I've worked with enough people to be able to not be one-sided to that and to feel compassion because, my God, the kinds of things, circumstances some people are in. And people are often sincerely, you know, apologetic that they let something like that happen in their lives and they make changes, man. You can't wrong people for apologizing and making amends. Jesus said forever, forever forgive people that um, have truly apologized and as long as they also make amends, which means I'm going to try not to make this mistake again. So just get the lesson, guys. Just get it. Don't sleep with people you don't want to have babies with and don't have babies with people that you don't love, you know, that you don't feel a certain love. If you can do that, if you could pull that off. I mean, you know, I had children and it wasn't always in a total state of perf perfect, blissful, let's channel in beings from the higher realms. You know, sometimes you're just being intimate with your partner and it happens. Um, so, so I understand the fears. I understand the pros and cons and all that. But I'm just going to say the following. First, you're not killing anyone when you have an abortion. The mystics throughout history have always believed generally speaking, like 90 something percent of the time, when a child comes to the mother, it comes at the first breath that the being takes. There is a biological something happening. There's a, there's a, a thing developing, um, you know, an, I, I don't want to call it an entity because then you think a, a person. There's a biological thing developing, all right? But generally, the soul is not in it. The soul could even be hovering near the mother and be aware of the body of the baby. You can even rebirth some people and they remember being in the womb, but they're actually not remembering them in the womb. They're remembering their contact in here with the body in the womb and they can describe it because they're asked to. But uh, there are many supports around this, it's mystical groups, Edgar Casey, and so on and so on, you know, that would support, there's nothing, you're not killing anything. And even if you were, you're not intending to, but so you, you, you're not, Unless you're being selfish, you're not being selfish, okay? Unless you're really overtly being stupid and selfish, don't hold yourself as though you are. So um, you may not agree, but um, you're not killing anything or anybody. I say you're not killing anybody. Um, the soul, you know, just doesn't enter the vessel until um, first breath. That's why in astrology, you're, you're, um, you're saying what time was the person born, meaning born not conceived, but born. Why? Because when you were born, roughly within seconds, you take your first breath. And when you do, the solar and stellar energies and the zodiacal energies and so on, they're, they're, they have a vibration. All planets and stars, they all, there's a vibration. Those vibrations are coming to the earth and you're living on the earth. So let's say I'm living right, right on this part of the earth, right over here. And this baby is born right here. The rays from all those planets and stars are hitting that specific spot. Hence, where were you born and what time were you born? Um, the zodiacal rays are hitting right there. And in that moment of the first, the, the breath, the chi entering and the air entering impregnates, for lack of a better word, imprints um, the rays of the, the stellar rays into your blood. First, it also is hitting through your first breath, you're igniting your first lung point in the lung meridian of all your um, acupuncture meridians, and then it starts surging through all your meridians. So you've brought the, those rays imprinted that specific moment into your meridians, your energy systems, also into your chakras, but also into your blood, because the blood's uh, circulating in and around the lungs, when you inhale, it imprints the blood in the lungs. Now the blood will carry through the system. They have arrived, and then that's your zodiacal chart. So keep that in mind that I'm not saying to be careless, but I'm saying don't, don't make up stories about how terrible you are for you know, doing, uh, making such a decision. Um, and also, um, most women, you know, the ones that have gone on to have children later, I would say four out of five times, maybe even more, maybe it's nine out of 10, but four out of five times um, when, you, when you have had an abortion and there, there, if, there, if there was a soul hanging around, there's not always even one hanging around, but you know, closely, but if there was one, usually that soul understands what you're gonna do. It understands that you do it and it's not affected in any way, unless you think hateful thoughts, I don't want you, I hate you, then it's of course picking that up. Okay, wow. 
don't like me, huh? And it might move on when you're done with an abortion. But more often than not, when you have an abortion, your child's going to come back as one of your children anyway. Often as the first child, but if not the second. So if you had an abortion, that child's coming back to you anyway. So it's kind of like we're all good. I mean, it just, it all works itself out. I'm not trying to be blasé about it, you know, because I know, man, it's intense. Um, oh my God, the, the stories um, I, people have told me. Um, some of the most gruesome and some of the most sad, you know, and it just varies so much. But, you know, um, we all make mistakes and it's okay to, to, I want to start over. I need an abortion because I'm going to start over. I need to file bankruptcy because I'm going to start over. I need to have surgery done on something that I got sick because I did something to myself and I want that out so I can start over. And sometimes we even end a lifetime when we pass away because we want to start over you know, a reboot. So uh, I'm not trying to treat it lightly. Um, I understand it's very deep. I could go on for an hour just on this topic and we could go into all kinds of deep healing and so forth around it. But I only wanted to address it on a simpler level because so many people get so charged. I didn't want to go too, too far with it as if this might not have already been too far. But, um, you know, so just, you know, keep these kinds of things in mind and know that Spirit holds nothing against you. It just sees you've done something. It seems like you hold yourself self-esteem uh, against your self-esteem. And sorry to hear that spirit saying, and we'll set you up in a way to work on that tomorrow, next year, next lifetime or whatever. Um, and that's all. It all works out. It's a system of, of, of uh, love. So it's, you know, it's coming to help us, to help us heal. And uh, there's no soul holding it against you. There's no child on the other side going, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Abort me, will you? You know, um, there's nothing like that. And there's no God holding it against you. It's just, you know, it's our other, it's our own stuff. Um, but our own guilts and shames can lead to various issues, relationship issues, esteem issues, um, health issues. It really, yeah, it really can. I remember my, my kids, I think they were probably um, uh, 10 -ish. 10, 12, maybe eight, so, you know, right around there. And I remember, um, I mean, they're, they're just bizarre anyway. Um, you know, they're just, they were a little ahead of most people in their age in so many ways. But um, one time I, we were driving and we drove by a picket that was happening. I didn't mean to, but we turned a corner and it was there. And uh, these were the, you know, anti-abortion people and um, they were picketing all kinds of hate against the clinic that would do abortions or women don't have rights and women, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, and they couldn't just say, you know, please don't choose abortion. They couldn't do that, you know. Um, they have to have the gruesome pictures of abortions after the fact, you know, and, and, and just gross, gross stuff. And they're on the main street holding signs for people of all age to see such disgusting things. Now, right there, right then and there, it, at best you're scaring people straight, which isn't healthy anyway. So I'm not sold on it. Just because you showed me something gruesome, all you did was tempt me to not like you, you know? <laughs> so um, I think it's gross. But, but oh, I turned the corner and instantly I went, oh. You know, I, this really conscientious kind of a parent that I was, like, you know, real aware of each thing I say and do, you know, and all that. I wasn't perfect, but I was pretty conscientious. I turned the corner and I was like, oh, God, you know, and um, <laughs> they see all these pictures and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, poor things. I'm trying to think any Buddhist mantra and anything that Catholic prayer, anything I can do to kind of quickly clear this, you know, and um, <laughs> they just broke out laughing. And I'm like, okay, it, does this, are they disturbed or something? Like, this was not the response I expected. They're laughing because guys, in one split second, their 10-ish year old minds, they already saw it. Look at these ridiculous people putting these gruesome pictures out there to try to disgust people into following their way. See, and they saw right through it. It was just so brilliant. They saw right through it. They're like, that's ridiculous. I mean, they just thought it was lame, ludicrous. They, it was just, it was so funny. And I was like, oh, thank you, God, for the, you know, 
these kids being bright because I was already feeling terrible that, you know, any child would see something like that. But, you know, that's what they said. And, um, you know, so just you just try to build self-worth by your connection with God in all the ways I was saying. And there's ways you, we can disconnect. Prayer and meditation and affirmation and positive self-talk. These help support. They don't give you self-worth. Remember that. They don't give it to you because you are it. But they help you to see it. Anything that peels off the contrary, layers of the contrary, help expose our true selves. And anything that, you know, brings in something new that to, for us to focus on, like affirmative, you know, affirmations, decrees, the truth of God. Because it is God. Anything I do that can, you know, enhances my connection with God um, is going to help my self-worth because it comes from God. So bring in God, you get more self-worth. And, um, or more, you see it more. So um, prayer, meditation, be kind to people because that helps build the real you. It brings it out and builds the greater you. Spiritual muscles like. And the things that take us away from recognizing our self-worth, all these things, the negative self-talk and the um, wounds of the past, heal them so they don't keep you down and take you down. And they, and they will. I mean, I know people who, um, who have had just, oh my gosh, such, sor such horrible choices they make today because of this pattern, this program that I don't deserve better. You, you don't know what I've done to myself. You know, I've known gals that just dated horrible people and it's because well in middle school i made a decision and i did this and once i did it i was marked so i was never going to be able to date a clean guy you know and and they just went in that direction the rest of their lives and i'm like god just start over man be a born again virgin you know start over just ask god to help you and say goodbye to all that and all you have to do is feel it inside, even if you don't totally experience it outside, which I think you will in some ways, depending on how much time you give it. But, you know, give yourself another chance. I need to learn to live from my true worth, not from my false esteem. That's what it comes down to. And um, anything we can do to help other people be in touch with that, that greater value, I think is great. And... Um, as a healer, I've done that. As a counselor, have you done that? Look at that, you know? Do you, do you um, if you're a hairstylist, do you remember to tell people how, that they look good? If they, you know, to, no, I'm not saying you need to make things up or lie to people, but find things that are likable about people and let them know. You know, I've always admired such and such about you. You know, it's like, really? That doesn't give them self-worth, but it gives them an opportunity to remember their self-worth. That's all. It gives them an opportunity to remember it, to go, Wow, that, that gets me to thinking, you know. Had something um, happen the other day where I was talking to one of my kids. And they said, yeah, Dad, you know, you really went out of your way to, to remind us of good things, you know, and keep things positive. And um, something really bad could happen in the family or peripheral side of the family or whatever out there in the world. And we kids would be aware of it. We'd be like, Dad, is everything okay? And you'd be like... You'd walk in the room and go, okay, who wants to go out for ice cream, you know? And, and we had a good laugh about it because I felt almost tearfully appreciative that, that she remembers how hard I worked to try to keep things positive. And yet, you know, it was a little bit like, you know, yeah, there were some challenges here and there, um, kind of a bummer. But, you know, and as she said, you know, yeah, you, you tried to do that, you know, yeah, everything's fine and, you know, and... And I, I don't think it's necessarily great to, I'm not saying hide things from people, um, but I do think it's appropriate to sometimes do that, especially with kids. Um, but to do so by focusing on the positive and let's do something positive. I think it's important to also deal with whatever seemingly is negative and not pretend it's not there, but you don't have to overly flaunt that to your kids. And if you've made mistakes that have affected your esteem slash then worth, um, either of those, um, I don't think it's a wrong thing for you to show how you've made changes and you want to do something differently. Yeah, positives, get them focused on positives, but also show changes. You know, you can say uh, if they do something like a bad, you know, like a, a thing that they, something they think they did something bad, you can say, um, oh, I remember I did that, you know? And I, you know what I did? Instead of just, you need to, 
You can say, and you know what I did? Because some people teased me. I did this. I did that. You know, and um, they're getting it. They're hearing like, oh, you know, so my daughter who has children says, now I understand um, what you were doing and why you were doing it. I Now I understand that you were being really kind of clever or brilliant about let's redirect this or let's do that or or even just how to teach the kids to, to live a kind of a clean-minded life as much as possible. Um, and, and again, I'm not flaunting like pretending that she was saying I was perfect or anything like that. Just certain specific things that I was being complimented on and th that's what I'm saying we can do for each other. Um, you see, you see um, sometimes I've seen children when I was working in schools more, uh, little kids' schools uh, when I was a, a young guy, you know, I would see a girl who maybe had a nice dress, people complimenting, and then it got torn or it got soiled, like muddied. Um, there, there's like, a, you could just see this cloud of shame drop over them. I would be like, shift it, shift gears. Um, one time, this one of the teachers brought a kid to me who had a broken arm. I mean, literally it was broken and you could see the parts. Um, and the child was a little scared as much as it was in pain. And so I just shifted gears into, you know, whatever I said, you know, you'll do anything for attention, won't you? Come on, you, you know, playful. And she would giggle a little. I mean, I'd have been screaming in pain, man. My arm's like two different spots. And, um, and she didn't cry. She, she, we shifted that. So people have, whether it's a, a fearful, like a painful thing or a self-worth thing where, Somebody said something to me or I did something that I feel ashamed about. Oh, I did that before, you know. Kid throws up at school, you know, in those days. I'd say, yeah, I remember I did that once. You blend in, you connect, you bridge with them so that we break the pattern of, uh-oh, I did something and now I'm descending into shame. You go, wait, sidetrack. And you take them out of shame so that they don't descend as far. It's a very tricky topic because you don't want to falsely distract people from true process, but you do want to be helpful and not let them believe that they're less than God created them to be. So you have the right, in a sense, to intervene if done appropriately and um, you know, with, with only love. If I do it because I'm a parent and I don't want my kid to have low self-esteem because I don't want to be a failed parent, don't you cry, I don't want anybody to see you crying, that's egotistical. That's different. I'm talking about helping them if they need to cry. Oh, honey, it's okay, cry again. See, it, make things okay. But then, what do you want the end result to be? Self-worth, connection to God. And you and I are being given opportunities to be that bridge. I, for one, don't want to be the person charging a heavy toll on that bridge that keeps people to be able to get across to God. So I want to be a good bridge master, you know, a good bridge for people. Um, the one that, that plays that role and says, how can I help? And oh my God, the more people you help get over that bridge back to connect with God versus dropping into low self-esteem. First of all, it's good. It's the right thing to do. It's good karma. But it's aside from that, it's the only right thing to do. It's a loving thing to do. So help where you can and how you can. Remember, I teach these things not for you to just go, oh, that was interesting. Um, if it doesn't feel true, let it go. Just move on to some another teacher or whatever. If it does feel true, don't just say that's interesting. Soak it in and get it so that you can turn around and teach it too. Hey, did you know there's a difference between self-worth and self-esteem? Don't preach it, but really get it. There's a difference. Eyes open. My spiritual eye and eyes are open. I get things. I don't mean me. I mean any of us. I get it. Be like that. You know, I get it, man. Self-worth, self-esteem, they're different. Here's why. Here's the one I choose. Here's the one I don't care so much about. Really get these things and practice, practice them in your day-to-day -day life. Okay? I pray this makes good sense to you, and I pray that you're well, and that you continue um, to grow and be committed on your spiritual path. Okay? Peace be with all of you. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.